Hey guys, what's going on? Today's video will be talking about how we can one-shot real estate agents and pretty much replace real estate agents. Or if you're a real estate agent and you want to be starting using AI in your real estate career so you can get leads faster than other competitors or sign leads and reach out to leads when you don't have the time actually so you can have AI agents to help you actually do that. Because in real estate, as we know, speed to lead is super important, which means that if another real estate agent reaches out to the same lead faster than you, that could be the difference between them signing a six-figure commission deal versus you signing a six-figure commission deal, which means you just lost out on so much money because you're not reaching out to your leads quick enough, right? So in today's video, we'll be talking about how to build an NAN workflow and an AI agent, which is able to reach out, contact, draft emails, check your availability, reach out to prospects and clients for you, which pretty much does everything you need as a real estate agent, so you don't have to be doing that yourself, and you won't be missing out on lost opportunities and revenue because you're not reaching out to your clients and prospects on time. Let's dive into this workflow so far. We're gonna be calling another agent in this workflow, as you can see here, there are a couple of tools. The first tool that we have is an NAN workflow tool, which we'll be diving into in just a second. The second tool is pretty much a database tool, which we'll be hosting on Airtable. The third tool is gonna be a checking availability tool, which checks our calendar if we're available to have a meeting with our prospects. And the last tool is gonna to be a draft email tool. So the AI agent is able to draft emails for us. So then all we have to do is hop on Gmail and click on send. So this entire workflow is available to copy and paste inside my school community. So if you want access to this, just join the school community and download the JSON file and just click on the top right-hand corner and click on import file to do this for yourself. So without further ado, let's dive into a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build this from scratch, as well as how to build the calling agent from scratch as well. So what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna start a quick demo. So we're gonna open chat and say, hi. Awesome, so it says, hello, how can I assist you today? Please take a look at my availability for tomorrow at 12 p.m. and see if I have any meetings. All right, so we're gonna just ask the chat if we have availability tomorrow at 12 p.m. because we wanna actually schedule a meeting with our prospect tomorrow and it says, hey, we're available tomorrow at 12 p.m. And it says, hey, we're actually available tomorrow at 12 p.m. So what we're gonna do now is that since we have availability tomorrow at 12 p.m., we're gonna ask a prospect if he's available at 12 p.m. tomorrow. Hey, can you ask Michael if he's available at 12 p.m. tomorrow? And can you draft an email for me uh, to Michael um, with real-time updates on the Canadian real estate market. All right, so what the AI agent now is gonna do is gonna search Airtable to see Michael's contact. It's then gonna ask Grok on what the best thing to say is, gonna go back to simple memory, draft an email in Gmail, and then we're gonna be able to see what um, it outputs with. So it says, I've checked your availability. So what we're gonna do now is pretty much hop over to Gmail. All right, so as you can see here, we have an email that has been drafted. All we have to do is just go to drafts, and it says, hey Michael, um, I hope this email finds you well. I wanna share some real-time updates on the Canadian real estate market. You didn't have to insert your updates here, and all you have to do is press send. All right, so as you can see here, um, it's pretty much uh, firing properly. Uh, now we're gonna dive in step by step in individual notes how to actually set this up for ourselves. All right, so what we're gonna do first is just gonna hop into the when chat message is received. That's gonna be our trigger because we wanna first chat with the bot and then the bot's then able to come up with a response for us and determine what type of tools they need to call, right? So that's gonna be the trigger when chat message is received. You're just gonna have to click on plus here and click on um, add another trigger. Um, and just gonna go down here on chat message, all right? That's gonna be the node. Double click on that, and that's pretty much all the settings we need to put um, on chat message receipt. We don't have to mess around with the triggers and the uh, inputs here. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna add an AI agent. So in order to do that, we're gonna click on plus here, and we're just gonna click on advanced AI, and we're gonna click on AI agent, all right? And for the chat model, we're gonna be using Grok. So all we do is gonna double click on that, connect it to your Grok account, I'm just gonna click on add and create a new credential. We're gonna go down to model and we're gonna select DeepSeek R1 Distill Llama 70B. That is the model that we're gonna be using for this demonstration. And now in terms of simple memory, we're just gonna click on add here and we're gonna click on simple memory. And that is the node we wanna to attach to the memory uh, portion of the AI agent. We're gonna double click on the simple memory. And pretty much what we're gonna do is we're gonna select connected chat trigger node and for the session ID, you wanna have two curly brackets, dollar sign JSON dot session ID, two curly brackets to end uh, that input. That's pretty much all we're gonna set for simple memory. We're gonna head over to the AI agent actually, 
and there's going to be a tools agent. So we want to be able to make sure that it's going to be tools, right? And then we're going to select connected chat trigger node. We do not want to select define below. And for the prompt, we're going to enter double curly brackets, dollar sign JSON dot chat input double curly brackets. So as you can see here, we have a prompt that we want to put inside the AI agent. So if you want that file, we actually have that right here. Pretty much hashtag role telling him what they are, what we want it to do. We're kind of outlining which tools we wanted to call and certain use cases that we wanted to call. I'm pretty much giving the AI agent instructions on what to do given certain questions. And you want to also make sure that you put in the date as well, which is super important. So the AI agent is able to know and determine what the current date is. So you want to be able to make sure you put in the double curly brackets, dollar sign now and double curly brackets to end that. And if you want this exact kind of prompt here, you can join the free school community to get access to this right away and just copy and paste that into your systems message. Just make sure that it's on fixed rather than expression. And that's all we need to do for the AI agent. And the next thing that we're going to be talking about is the NNN workflow tool. It's pretty much get real time updates on the real estate market. And how do we actually do this? So we're just going to head over to the sub workflow right now just to go through what that looks like. So then you, you guys are able to build that on the side. So this is what the tool looks like. So when the previous kind of workflow was executed and the AI agent determines that we do need to call this workflow to grab the real time real estate data in a certain country, this workflow will then execute. All right. So the first trigger um, is pretty much when executed by another workflow, that's going to be the workflow that we just went through. The next trigger is going to be an RSS read. So how do we connect this? We're just going to head over to plus here, type in RSS. And that is the first one um, connected right there, which going to double click on that. And in terms of the inputs and the node configurations, what we're going to do is we're going to head in there and we, as you can see here, there's an URL here. So how do we actually get real time data? We're just going to head over to Feedspot in order to do this. So we just have to determine what kind of blog or real time data we want. So just make sure you head over to a blog or a feed which has an RSS feed. All right. So as you can see here, most of these has RSS feeds. Let's just go with the first one. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click on this one right here. So as you can see here, there's a lot of text, but we're not going to copy and paste this text. What we're going to do instead is we're going to head over to the URL. We're just going to copy that and then we're going to head back into NNN. All right, we're back into NNN. What we're going to do is we're going to head over to the RSS read here. Double click on that and we're just going to paste that URL into this input here. And that's all we need to configure for the RSS read. And then the next step is pretty much configuring a basic LLM chain. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over here, type in LLM chain. And that's pretty much all we're going to select. All right. So we're going to double click on that to see the configurations. We're going to select define below. And for the prompt user message, you want to have this uh, kind of prompt here. All right. Just so just pause the video and copy and paste this specific prompt in order to have that output it. And for the last output, we pretty much just want the chat to output a message. So we're going to select on edit fields. So edit field. We're pretty much going to select that. Double click on that. And we're going to click on manual mapping for fields to set. We want to set it to select a response and we want it to be a string type. And we want to select double curly brackets, dollar sign JSON dot text because we want it to output a text format, right? So that's pretty much all we want to do for this step. And we're just going to attach a model, which is going to be open AI for the basic LLM chain. Just go down here, create new credential, paste your uh, API key, and you're pretty much all set to go. And this is how this is going to fire. All right. So now let's head back into the main flow here and talk about a few of these tools that we want to kind of call here. So the first tool we want to call is the Airtable database. All right. So in order to set up an Airtable tool, we're just going to head over to the Airtable kind of platform. And pretty much we're going to have a workspace named real estate data. We're going to name this called clients and we're going to type in the relative important fields that we wanted to actually analyze. And that's pretty much how we're going to set up our data here. And in order to actually uh, create a new credential and attach Airtable, we're just going to go over to a builder's hub here, click on create new token and just name your token like real estate data or something. And for the scopes, you just want it to be set to read um, and as well as the schema dot read. Those are pretty much the two ones you need to attach. And the more importantly, you want to go down to access, click on add a base and select the database that you want it to connect and just click on create token. And then just copy that and paste it into um, your search Airtable database credential. So pretty much there. 
and that's all we need to do for tool description we want it to be set automatically for resource we want to be set it to record and for operation we want to be set to search because we want um, the agent to search data uh, on the air table and make sure you select the relevant and respective lists uh, from the base as well as from the table and for the return all we're just going to click that to on all right so that's pretty much all we need to set up for the air table kind of node now for the next node we're going to go over to going to go over to here and type in air table and we're just going to click on that all right so for the next node we're going to select uh, availability we want the ai agent to see if our calendar is available right so we're, all we're going to do is going to click on plus here and select calendar and you want to select the google calendar tool all right so we're gonna click on that and pretty much all you wanna do is you wanna set up your Google Calendar account. All you wanna do is select the credential to connect with, create a new credential. For tool descriptions, you wanna set it to automatic. And for resource, you wanna select calendar, not event. And for operation, you wanna see if you're available, right? Of course, select your email. And for the start time, you wanna do a double curly bracket, a dollar sign now. And for the end time, you wanna do a dollar sign now dot plus, open bracket one comma, hour all right so that's pretty much all we're going to do and for the output format we want to output as availability all right and that is pretty much all we're going to do for the check availability tool and last but not least we're going to go over to the draft email tool so what we're going to do is we're going to click on a plus here click on gmail and that's pretty much all we're going to select the gmail tool right we're going to double click on that we're going to select our gmail account and I'm going to set automatically for the tool description and for the resource, you want to click on draft because we want it to draft an email. We do not want it to send an email right away because we want to double check it. And for the operation, we want to click on create because we want, to, we want Gmail to create a draft. All right. For the subject line, we're going to ask it to automatically determine that by clicking on this button here. So AI is going to automatically determine what the subject line is. And for the email type, a lot of people get this wrong by saying HTML, but we actually want it to be text because we were sending an email in text form, right? Not HTML. And for the message, we want the AI to automatically determine that by clicking on the star button on the right hand side. And for the options, you want to select to email and also define automatically by the model. So then this agent is going to be able to call these different tools, check your availability as a real estate agent and send draft emails to prospects and clients. So then you have more time to work on actual stuff in your business rather than having to reach out to these leads one by one. Having this automation will really help you out and help you stand out from other agents in the field. If you want more one-on-one -on -one help from my team and I to help you build and scale your first AI automation agency so you can start selling these AI infrastructures and AI systems to local businesses and even online businesses so you can make upwards of five to ten thousand dollars every single month by selling these AI packages, then click on the link down below to book a call with my team and I so we can start an implementation call with you and help you build and scale your first AI automation agency. So if you enjoyed this video, if you like this video so far, uh, please give this a video a like and a subscribe and I'm super excited to see you in the next video.